Hello, good morning to everyone. This is our lecture in campus journalism. So today we'll be studying about loose writing. Right. So upon studying this lecture, we're going to compare the structure of a new story to that of the structure of a short story. Then we're going to study also the different kinds of leads, specifically the traditional and alternative leads. And towards the end, we're going to study how should the uh, news be written. Okay, so we're going to dissect or we're going to uh, really see the parts on how to uh, make or how to write news or effective news story. Okay, so let's start by uh, comparing the structures of the short story and the news story. Okay, so as you can see here, this is a structure of the short story wherein it begins with an exposition, right, until a problem arises, okay, and it, uh, it will go to the rising action until it hits or it, uh, uh, it reaches the climax or the most intense part of the story. And then suddenly it will be resolved by the characters, especially the main characters in the story, until it will go to the falling action and then the resolution. So as you can see here, uh, the most intense part, okay, the peak of the story is at the middle or towards uh, near the end okay, of the story, right? Well, if you're going to compare that to the structure of the uh, structure of a new story okay you can see here that uh, the structure is uh, an inverted pyramid why is it invert inverted pyramid because in the at the beginning of the story you must already provide the most important parts or the most important uh, uh, content of your new story so you, here you can see already the w's and h or the who what where when why and how Okay, and uh, the succeeding the succeeding paragraphs will be additional information about the news. Okay, so as you can notice here, uh, the, the the degree of importance is decreasing. Okay, that's why it's uh, that's why the illustration is an inverted pyramid. Okay, so from the most important to the least important details. So that's the difference between. Uh, between the structure of a short story and the structure of a new story, okay? So you can already find the, 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 the most essential parts upon reading the lead of the story, okay? Why is it important or why uh, does a short story or why does a new story have, has that kind of structure, okay? Well, because uh, many readers nowadays, okay, uh, are busy okay they're doing a lot of things okay and if you read the newspaper okay, you, you you read newspaper because you wanted to be informed about the, the current events okay so since we are busy readers are busy it's very important that news writers would already provide all the necessary details at the beginning of the news story or in the lead itself okay so there's no need to, for uh for uh, the reader to read everything just to know uh, the most important details about the story okay so even though they will just read the lead for example they know already the basic information about the news unlike uh, reading a short story well you have different purpose anyways when you read a short story in a news story okay you read news story new story because you you wanted to be informed you read a short story because you wanted to be entertained, okay? So, it, it's okay if uh, the, the climax is at the middle, okay? If you, in, when you read a short story, you need to really finish the, or read everything for you to really get the gist or the meaning of that story. So, unlike in, in a new story, in a new story, upon reading the lead, you already know the basic uh, information about the news, okay? especially the five W's and one H. Okay? So the way you're going to write short st story is very different when you write news story. Okay? So we have two kinds of lead. Okay? We have the traditional lead and the alternative lead. When we say traditional lead, these are the leads that journalists usually use before 
okay? And then here comes another kind of lead, which is an alternative lead. Well, it's called alternative lead because it deviates from, from the norms. It deviates from the rules of grammar. Okay, well, we're going to talk more about that later on, but let's talk first about the traditional lead. Okay, so we have an example of a traditional lead here, which is who lead. Okay, so let's try to read the example here. British Prince William yesterday said he will visit the Philippines in November. Now, in identifying uh, what appropriate lead should be used, you have to know first what's the news values of that particular news, okay? So if it includes novelty, okay, if it includes novelty, then uh, you have to really, uh, you have to really use the who lead. So for example, there's novelty here in this, uh, in this, uh, in this lead, right? Well, definitely, uh, he is a prince, okay, he is a prince, so uh, the most appropriate lead to be used here is a who lead, okay? So, so you can notice here, okay, um, you can notice what kind of lead or you can identify what kind of lead was used upon reading the first few words of the lead. So for example, British Prince William, definitely it's a who lead because it refers to a known person, okay? Did you get it? All right, now let's proceed to the next kind of lead under traditional lead. We also have the what lead, okay? If you think what happened is more important, then you have to emphasize that one, okay? You need to use what lead. All right, so example, the oil price hike will trigger higher food prices. Economist from the University of the Philippines said in a symposium on Tuesday. The most important part of this, uh, of this uh, news story is the oil, oil price hike, okay? So the most appropriate lead to be used is what lead, okay? So as you can see here, it was mentioned already in the first few words of the lead, the oil price hike, okay? We also have the when lead. You know? If you think, uh, the time is very much essential in that kind of new story, then you have to really provide or you have to really use when lead. So for example, for the first time in 20 years, so this is historic, it is historical, yeah? So it's, uh, it states here, for the first time in 20 years, a Muslim in Mindanao was nominated as speaker uh, of uh, representative. Okay, so it happens after 20 years, okay? So the time is very significant in this kind of, of uh, new story. So when did is, uh, is very important, okay? There. Okay, another kind of lead is where lead. You know? if, the, if the place is very significant in the story, you can use where lead. And as you can see, it was mentioned already in the first few words, okay? Luneta Park was filled with G-string clad men on Saturday in an effort to raise awareness of cultural minorities. Since Luneta Park is, Park is very essential in the story, you can use where lead, okay? And then, if you think uh, how uh, why is why the story happened, okay, is is important in the story, then you can emphasize that one. You can use then in why lead. Faulty wiring caused the fire that raised a hardware store to the ground yesterday. So if uh, you would like to inform your readers, what's the cost? Okay, because in this kind of news, uh, the first question that you're going to ask, where most important uh, question, one of the most important questions you're going to ask is, what's the cost of the fire, right? So you, if you found the answer for that, then you can make use of why lead. All right, and the co and the, the cause, of course, it was emphasized here that it's the faulty wiring. Okay, and last for 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 traditional lead, we also have the how lead. If how it happened is more important, then you can make use of how lead. So using his bare hands to kill the snakes, the soldier saved a six 
year old boy from it's, it should be from okay from beat, uh, being bitten okay using his bare hands okay to kill the snakes okay well it's it's not uh, very typical because usually uh, if we see someone or ourselves in danger because of a snake or a snake bite no uh, what we, we use is uh, we we make use of other materials like stick or any other material that we can use to, to kill the snake. But here, it's, it's not typical because, you know, the, 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 the person here killed the snake using just using his bare hands. So the process of killing it, right, how, it, it's, it's, it's more essential in this kind of story. So you can make use of how lead. Okay, so you need to determine. I'm saying here that in order for you to, to select the most appropriate type of lead to be used, you need to know first what's the most important in that kind of story. Is it the place that is more essential? Is it how the story happened that's more essential? Is it the time that is more important? Is it the, the is it, is, uh, you know, the, the time, how, and the if is, is is the story itself is more important what happens is more very important then you can make use of what lead if that's the case okay so you need to determine right well um other uh, writers other journalists also make use of summary lead okay you take note of that summary lead what is a summary lead summary lead makes use of this the combination of these different leads okay remember a lead can be a sentence or a paragraph Okay, in summary lead, you will already mention the five W's and one H in that lead, okay, in that sentence or in that paragraph, okay, that's an additional lead, in traditional lead, huh? or in type of lead, okay, it's a summary lead, okay, okay, um, well, it's very important to take note that, uh, a lead should uh, be a single sentence. Oh, well, if, if a lead can be, uh, if a lead, an effective lead is a single sentence that contains only one idea. So you have to make sure that in every sentence, okay, it should contain only one idea. Okay, it, it must contain one idea. The same is true with the paragraph. So each paragraph must contain one idea only if we are going to talk another for another idea then you have to make another another paragraph of that okay but when it comes to sentences okay it's very important to to emphasize to have that one uh one uh, idea per sentence however you have to make sure that the sentences are not uh are are, are not uh you know, hanging or since you've mentioned that it it must be one idea per sentence, baka naman very short na yung mga sentences mo, na pwede mo naman actually i-combine yung three sentences because these three sentences only pertain to one idea. Okay, you have to take note of that, right? That for, for you to to have, uh, to avoid broken sentences. Okay? Now, let's try to identify which of the following lead uh, is a strong lead. Okay. Is this uh, a strong lead? Which one is a strong lead? Okay, I have time to, to read and think. Okay, which one is more effective? Which one is a strong lead? The first or the second lead? It's the second lead. Why? Again, you need to determine okay, the news values of, of this particular new story, right? Now, in the first lead, it, uh, the name was mentioned, like Juanita de la Cruz, 18, a student of Far Eastern University, died in a car accident along North Expressway yesterday. The question is, is Juanita de la Cruz a known person? Is he, uh, is, is she, rather, 
is uh, she um, a celebrity? If the person is not known, you don't need to mention it in the lead. You don't need, need to mention the name in the lead because you can just mention who died in the succeeding paragraph. Okay? So instead of giving the name since this person is not known, you can just make a general you can just make a short description of this person. So for example, in the second lead, uh, it was stated that an 18-year-old female student, which is a description of Juanita de la Cruz. Okay? Again, if the person is not known, if uh, there's no novelty that is uh, uh, the, the evident loose values in that particular news story, you don't need to mention the name in the lead. You can just mention the name in the succeeding paragraphs. Okay, so the second one is more uh, effective or it's a strong lead, stronger lead than the first one. Okay, what about this one? Which one is the strong lead? The strong lead between the two leads is the first one. Why? Let's try to read both, okay? Police arrested a man at dawn yesterday for alle allegedly robbing a McDonald's outlet in Cubao. A McDonald's outlet in Cubao was held up around midnight on Tuesday by a lone gunman. So probably some of you are confused because, well, um, if this is the case, the second one, a McDonald's outlet in Cubao, well, it could be because the place is uh, is known, right? But you go, yeah, yeah, it could be. But you're going to compare the leads in this uh, particular uh, situation, okay? Because the first lead. Look, look at look at the, the first lead okay the first lead narrates okay it narrates the latest development of the story so if there's a latest development of the story then you have to emphasize that one in your lead okay so in the new story it begins its narration from the ending okay so in the second lead you can see here that uh, yeah you just you're just reporting that the McDonald's outlet in Cubao was held up, but in the first lead, the man who's uh, behind this uh, crime was already arrested. So which one is the recent development or which one is the re recent news? It's the first one. So the first one is a strong lead. It's a better lead compared to the second lead. Okay, there you go. Another one. Which one is a better lead? Which one is a strong lead? Okay, it's the first lead. Why the first lead? Because in a lead, leads should be action based. In the second lead, it is just stated, okay, that a survey was conducted. So it's it's purely informing the public, okay. But again, lead should be action based. In the first one, you can see here that uh, what's the result of the survey, okay. So in the second lead, it was not mentioned. The, the result of the survey was not mentioned, okay. But in the second one, the results of a survey showing Filipinos perception on government corruption was released okay on the social weather uh, uh, station yesterday okay all right so so uh, it was already uh, released it was stated here okay so it's action based all right okay now let's talk about the alternative lead there are different kinds of alternative lead. Again, when we say alternative lead, uh, it's uh, it deviates from the traditional rules of grammar, for example, or traditional or uh, the convention of writing lead. Okay, so we have the punch lead. So a punch lead is a brief, witty, and sometimes paradoxical statement. When we say paradoxical statement, this is a statement that seems not true but actually happens. 
Okay? So, like a good joke, it is a punchline that catches readers off guard. So, the, the importance or the attribute of a, of a punch lead is that it has the ability to hook the readers. Okay? So, it can be a joke. Okay? It can be a paradoxical statement. Right? Let's try to see an example. Watching television can be deadly. So as you can see here, it seems like uh, you know it's a it's a lead of a feature news, but it can be right. It can be a lead in news, okay? Because again, it deviates from the convention of writing lead, okay? But it's very important to have not draft, okay? So in the six succeeding paragraph, a not draft will be stated. Okay, as you can see in the lead, uh, it, the, the, the five W's, one H, uh, I mean, the, the basic information that the, the readers must know uh, was not mentioned in the lead. So you need not graph. Okay? So the not graph contains already the five W's and one H. So the not graph on this kind of lead is this. Osilito de Cruz, 35, was beaten to death when he changed the television channel against the wishes of the other patrons the Lupalooza bar along Taft Avenue last night. Okay? Alright. So, and the, you can also, you might also reflect on the sample lead. Watching television can be deadly. How can watching television be deadly? So it's, it, it's really paradoxical. It seems like not true, but it actually happens. So it was, uh, it was uh, proven by the nut graph. Okay, by the information stated in the nut graph. Okay, there. Another example of uh, an alternative lead is a picture or descriptive lead. Okay, so some might also think that they, they, this is appropriate for, uh, for uh, you know, for a feature news, but it can also be used in, 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 uh, uh, in uh, you know, that in a lead, okay, in a news lead. Okay, because we also have what we call the the feature, uh, the news feature. Okay, for news feature, you can use these kinds of lead as well. Okay, for example, dressed in shiny metallic blouses, the silver jubilarians waved, smiled, and posed for the cameras during their homecoming festivities at the Saint Cecilia's Auditorium on February eighth. Okay, so you must have to. You must have a lot of descriptive words with you when you're going to use the picture or descriptive word because you let uh, the readers imagine, okay, the, the what happened, imagine the look of the people involved, okay. So yeah, it's like it's like a lead also in in picture because it's more of descriptions. But again, you can use this in news uh, in 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 news leads, okay. There. You use descriptive words here. Another is a contrast lead. This example of a contrast lead, okay, 40 years old, uh, 40 years ago, he was a fish vendor in Kundo. Today, he is the ninth richest person in the country. Okay, so as you can see, there is contrast here, okay. When do we use contrast lead? We use contra const uh, contrast lead for for uh, celebrities. Okay, for example, uh, those celebrities who are not that uh, not that too too popular, and after years, okay, after few years, they become a uh, superstar. For example, ba o kaya um player ng basketball sa NBA na hindi naman napapansin bangko siya. So, after several years, because of constant training and dedication to the sports, naging superstar siya in basketball. So you can use this cont uh, contrast lead. Okay? There. And, and even conflicts actually, pwede mo imitin itong si contrast lead. Okay. Also have the question lead. Uh, you can use question lead for new uh, for news feature. You can use question lead for uh, uh, for a feature uh, a news feature and feature itself. Okay, but uh, what we're what uh, the focus for this discussion is for news lead. 
Okay, so yes, it can be used for loose stories. Okay, for example, is a tuition fee increase really necessary? So in this case, again, the five W's, one H word, the basic information is not uh, complete here. Was not mentioned here. Okay, right. But in this kind of uh, lead, you need a nut graph again. Since this information were not mentioned, then a nut graph would provide these kinds of information. Okay, so for example, a tuition fee increase can be avoided next year if the school manages to raise 500,000 pesos from the newspaper drive. Principal Ochoa said yesterday. So there's a, an answer already in the question raised in the uh, uh, in the first uh, uh, in the in the lead. So in the question lead, you don't you don't um, left your readers hanging. Unlike in in opinion, for example, you can let your readers uh, think. Okay, what should be what should be done? Okay, or let you let them uh, think of uh, a solution or a conclusion for example right but well it's a news right so you don't need you don't let them hang in you provide the information so through the nut graph the, the question was already answered that this is not necessary as long as they can raise a fund of 500,000 pesos from the newspaper tribe okay this is also interesting to use another is a quotation date also, it can be used in loose uh, in, in feature, okay, in quotation lead, but in, in feature, you use quotation coming from from lit literature, for example, from a verse in the Bible, for example. You can, you can make a quotation from a short story or a poem, okay? But in, in news, you need to use uh, a quotation coming from a known personality, okay, which has connections to the news itself. So, for example, um, you reported about a game, okay. So you can make you can make use of a statement or quotation used by their coach, or a quotation or statement uttered by the MVP in the story. You can make use of those, okay? So for example, we will win the championships. Coach Virgilio Santos confidently declared yesterday. Um, it, this this lead is also uh, widely used already in these stories. No? Pero maganda talaga siyang gamitin, okay? Alright. Now, um, I, I hope you've already... Uh, you already have an idea, okay? You already learned about the different kinds of lead, and uh, you can practice writing different kinds of leads uh, right now, okay? So you get necessary information, you attend an event, for example, okay? and you can take note of the details, and then you try to practice. Uh, you try to practice writing leads. That's very necessary, and that's I mean it's very important for you to enhance your your journalistic writing, especially loose writing, okay? So that's for lead. What about for the body? Okay, for the body, definitely we have still, lead is part of the, you know, of the news. So it starts with the lead. And uh, for example, an 18-year-old female student died in a car accident along North Expressway yesterday. And then you're going to follow it up again. You have to remember the inverted pyramid. Okay, so from the most important to the least important. Okay, so the most important was already mentioned in the lead. Okay, what's the, the other next uh, important? Okay, the succeeding information would be the identification of the who. Since the person is not known, is not a celebrity, it was not mentioned in the lead. So in the next paragraph, in this paragraph, you now have to mention Who's the victim? Okay, so the victim was Joan de la Cruz, a Prello student of the Far Eastern University and daughter of Court of Appeals Justice, Jose de la Cruz. Okay, the who's. Okay, so she, father niya, okay, and other necessary information for the second paragraph. 
for the third paragraph, we also have expounding the what, where, and when. Okay? So, other necessary information, right? Since these were not mentioned in the lead in the second paragraph. Okay? She was found dead inside a 1980 Toyota Corolla with the Plate number AUY340 uh, by a highway patrolman at around 3 p.m. The car was in a ditch not far from the toll plaza of North Expressway. Her body was brought to the Valenzuela Memorial Hospital. Okay, so what is there? Where? Where did it happen? When did it happen? Okay, all of these were mentioned in the third paragraph. So you, it can be a, it can be also it can be a guide for you who are beginning writers. Okay, you can you can make use of this guide for you to structure very well your new story. Okay, and then fourth, you need to expound now your why and how. Okay, so as you can notice, um, ikot din din siya sa five Ws and one H. Okay, but again, you have to remember it must be through decreasing importance. So initial police reports show that the brakes of her car malfunctioned, causing the car to skid and fall in the ditch. So why did why did it happen? It was already mentioned here because of what? The brakes of her car malfunctioned. Okay, the brake fluid container was dried up and the brake lining was very thin. So this is now the how. Okay? Bakit yun nangyari? It's because the brake fluid container was dried up and the brake lining was very thin already. Okay, that's according to a police officer, Manuel Reyes of Valenzuela Police Precinct. Fifth paragraph, you can add drama to the story. Okay, like police called the family of the victim and her father came to identify the body. She was supposed to follow. This is now the drama part of the story. She was supposed to follow in my footsteps and be my legal aid, said the, uh, the theory I just did the Cruz. And you can add the drama to that. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's in the uh, last part of the story already. Okay, okay, the last paragraphs of this, the new story. Okay, sixth paragraph related but least important information. Okay. So, the, the accident caused a four-hour traffic jam along North Expressway, but traffic was following smoothly by 8 p.m. after the damaged car had been towed. Okay, so you can notice also here, yeah, yeah there you go, you can notice the structure, you know, it involves, the it uh, revolves around the, the 5Ws1H, Okay, and as you can notice here, each paragraph is not that too lengthy. Why? Again, we're going to go back to what I said that in each paragraph you have to you have to focus only on one idea. Okay, right. Writing a writing paragraph or a paragraph in uh, in news writing and writing a paragraph in essay are different. Okay, because in essay you need uh, a topic sentence. And in the, in the topic sentence, uh, the succeeding sentences in that paragraph will be about your topic sentence. But in uh, in news writing, there is no topic sentence. Alright, that's one. Alright? Okay. And another observation uh, in, in this example is uh, mostly it, uh, it is done or the sentences are in the active voice. It's very important that... Uh, uh, that uh, you have to maintain that uh, structure of your sentence. Why? Because active voice would be, or can make your writing um, can can make your like uh, your writing less worthy, uh, worthy, uh, worthy, less worthy. Okay, and then it would emphasize the doer of the action as well. But I'm not saying that you always use. Uh, active voice because you can also see some sentences here which are not in the active voice which are in the passive voice well it depends if you wanted to emphasize uh, if uh, uh, if you wanted to emphasize something okay or if you don't want to emphasize uh, you know the, the the doer of the action okay then you can make use of uh, of passive voice so it depends as well on the intention and of 
the intention of the right of writing and it depends on the importance also of that particular sentence okay it depends on what you need and what you wanted to emphasize in that particular sentence okay and last observation in this uh, in this uh, news this is not very lengthy yes po so pagka kapag uh, news story no mas maikli mas much better but i am not saying na mas maikli okay dalawang paragraph lang tatlong paragraph lang well you need to ask yourself as well no kapag ka binasa ba ito ng aking readers will they have a lot of questions no uh, will i left my uh, readers hanging baka naman kulang yung information ko all right you need to think as that as well okay so again it doesn't need to be lengthy as long as it is concise and it is complete okay yeah, that's that's the structure that's the news story okay so you can you can already practice you know you can read uh, um, events attend events observe uh, something make uh, important happenings in your community okay you can make use already uh, you can make you can practice already writing a news story okay there you go. So that's our lesson about news writing. Thank you so much. If you're still listening in this part, thank you so much for uh, watching this lecture. I, I, I hope that you have, uh, I have somehow helped you understand how to write news. Okay. Once again, thank you so much.